My name is Lisa Ross, though you may know me better as Paper Daisy Creations, and today I'm going to be showing you how to use your knitting needles to create a garter tab cast on. So I'm going to begin by explaining what the garter tab cast on is and why we're going to use it for this shawl. So you're going to begin by casting on two stitches. And I'm going to indicate that just with these circles right here so that you can see what we're doing. Then we're going to make a series of garter ridges. We're going to have a total of three garter ridges. Okay, and we still end with two stitches on the needles. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that. Now this right here, these are just the cast on stitches, so they're not actually live stitches. But right here is where we have our live stitches. What we're going to do then is turn our work and we're going to pick up a stitch here in that first garter ridge, here in the second garter ridge, and here in the third garter ridge. And then we're going to pick up the two cast on stitches. So what we're going to end up with are seven stitches. Now you can also do this with three stitches at a time instead of, um, instead of just two. Um, there's actually, you can, you can use any number of stitches, but for this particular cast on, this is how we're going to do it. We will cast on two stitches, have a total of three garter ridges. We will have two live stitches on the needles, pick up three in each garter ridge, and then pick up the two cast on stitches for a total of seven stitches. Now the reason that we do this is it's going to create a little garter tab that will look like a little rectangle. And as we work this shawl, we're going to be extending that rectangle of stitches into garter ridges all the way along the side. And this particular shawl uses, um, uses two stitches for the edge. Uh, some, some patterns may use more, so you can pick up, um, if your pattern calls for you to use three cast on stitches, um, you're, that would mean that you're working three edge stitches all the way along. Um, and this gives you your nice, straight, even edge of garter ridges all along this side. And it can be used for different shapes of shawls. All right, now to get started, I need to have my yarn. Um, I like to work a long tail cast on, and I like to do it by beginning without a slip knot. So um, most of the ways, the, the way that I was taught to work a long tail cast on is when you create a slip knot, slide the needle in, and begin working. But that creates this little knot right here. It's not a big deal. You can definitely do that and count this as your first cast on stitch. But there is a way to do it where you don't end up with a little knot. And all that is, is prepare your fingers for the long tail cast on. So for this, I put my um, thumb and forefinger under here. I hold the strings with my fingers down here, they keep those tight together, and I've created a little triangle right there. And what I'm going to do is um, put my needle under that yarn, and just like I would for a long tail cast on. So if you already know how to do a long tail cast on, you're just going to make one long tail cast on stitch. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my hand, go underneath the uh, the yarn that's between the thumb and the held yarn. I'm going to scoop up the yarn that's next to my forefinger and pull it back through this hole that's created like that. And then I just let go and I've got, I now have two stitches on my needles. So I'm going to show you that one more time just in case you are not familiar with long tail cast on. So I put my thumb and forefinger between these. I hold on to the tail and the working yarn. I put the needle underneath the yarn that runs between my thumb and forefinger. I turn and bring it underneath the yarn that's right next to my thumb. 
And then I scoop up this yarn that's right next to my forefinger and pull it back through that hole right next to my thumb. And that creates a second stitch. All right, so there are my first two cast on stitches. Um, if you have another preferred method for casting on those stitches, you can do that. Um, and again, if, if it doesn't work for you to, um, to work it without the slip knot, feel free to include that slip knot. It's a very tiny, tiny, tiny feature that it's not a big deal if your shawl has that little knot right there. All right, and now what I'm doing is I'm going to just be knitting back and forth for six rows, creating three garter ridges. So I knit these two stitches once, turn and knit them twice. Now it is only two stitches. It is a little finicky, especially if you have a long cord. So it may take a little bit of practice just to um, keep those stitches tight, keep them working back and forth. Okay. Now for some patterns, it may cause call for working eight rows or 10 rows. Uh, it all depends on what the pattern designer has in mind for that garter tab and what they have planned for the edge stitches. Okay, so as you can see, I've got a tiny little rectangle and honestly, it doesn't look like much of a rectangle right now because of these um, tiny little stitches. But I have one, two, three garter ridges. I have these live stitches here. So let me show you on the drawing. So these are my live stitches right here. I'm going to pick up one, two, three stitches inside each garter ridge and then I'm going to pick up my two edge stitches. So to do this, I'm going to have to turn my knitting so that I can pick up this side. So we're going to turn it 90 degrees. Okay, this might be a little bit tricky to see because I'm going to turn it and then I'm going to have to pick up and knit those stitches. Okay, so I'm going to go into the first garter ridge now be careful that you're not splitting stitches here. And just find a good spot to go in there that's not going to mess anything up. Sometimes it might take a try or two. Okay, so I go into that uh, first garter ridge and I pull a loop through. So what I did was I yarned over here and then I'm going to pull that through. So there's one into the second ridge. Two. And then into the third ridge. Right here is three. All right. So I now have five stitches on the needles. These are the two that were my live stitches. I have three picked up stitches along the length of that rectangle. And now I'm going to turn it again. And you can see I've got my tail right here um, from, my, from my cast on. I'm going to be picking up into these two stitches. And I'll be honest, they're probably going to be a bit tight. So it may take a couple of tries to get in there, but you need to get those two stitches picked up. So I'm going to go in one and then into two. All right, it is not going to look like a rectangle right now. <laughs> it's going to look like a blob attached to seven stitches. I have my two that were cast on, the three picked up along the garter ridges, and the two picked up from the cast on. 
It's not a lot to look at right now, but as we go, you're going to see that that rectangle is going to form um, a seamless line along with the stitches at the edges. Um, I'll go ahead and show you the next part where I add my stitch markers. So again, you need to follow your pattern. It depends on what your pattern calls for, but for this one, I'm going to knit two because these are my edge stitches. I'm going to purl one, which is my center stitch, or sorry, one of my, one of the stitches for the body of my shawl. I'm putting a marker on right here. Purl one, put on another marker, purl one, and now I'm going to work my two edge stitches again in the knit stitch. All right, I'm gonna move this onto the cord so you can see it a little bit better. But again, you're really not gonna get the full effect of the beauty and seamlessness of this cast on until we have much, much more worked. And that is your garter tab cast on. Now, some people find that the garter tab cast on is just too tricky for them. Those tiny stitches on those needles, it's too much. They don't like working it. So I'm going to show you an alternative, and this is a magic loop cast on. I prefer the look of a garter tab cast on, and I don't mind the extra work, but really, because it's such a tiny part of the shawl, this is a perfectly acceptable alternative. So what you're going to do for a magic loop cast on, now if you're a crocheter, you may have experience with this. What you wanna do is cross your yarn. So I'm taking the yarn, crossing it over, and then I'm going to just fold that loop down like this. And now what I wanna do is pull stitches into this loop, into this magic loop. So here's how I'm going to do it. Now, if you have a crochet hook, you can work it with a crochet hook. Um, I'm going to do it just with a knitting needle because that's what I have on hand. All right, so I hold my tail with my circle or loop. I'm going to go in to that loop. So I took my needle, went into the loop. The right hand is holding the um, working, or sorry, the tail and the circle and then I'm going to scoop up a stitch. Okay, now if I try to go back in and scoop up another stitch, it's just going to undo the work that I've done. So what I'm going to do is yarn over for stitch two. So that's my second stitch. Now I'm going to go back into the same hole, scoop up the yarn with a yarn over, and that's stitch number three. I'm going to yarn over, that's four, go into the hole, pick up one more stitch, that's five, yarn over for stitch six, and into the hole for stitch seven. So I've now picked up seven stitches, and all I have to do is pull that loop nice and tight, and I have my seven stitches cast on, ready to knit. Now, um, with this, tail you're gonna you're going to want to be sure to keep that tail um once until you've worked several rows uh keep snugging it up to keep that as an invisible um, cast on you don't want there to be a big hole there at the end but i've got seven stitches one two three four five six seven and those stitches are ready to be worked so for the this pattern i'm going to knit two Oops. Yeah. knit two p1 place marker this is the wrong side of my shawl that i'm working right now p1 that's my center stitch place marker P1 and K2. That is my first wrong side row. And you can see that hole got a little bit bigger. So I've got to snug it up, keep snugging that up on the first few rows. 
and eventually you'll weave it in so that it's nice and tight. But you can see I've got a uh, seamless cast on right here, seven stitches, uh, and uh, it will not be a perfect um, rectangular length on your shawl, uh, but it is not going to be anything that anyone will notice. Um, and this is a perfectly acceptable alternative should you not enjoy the garter tab cast on. So again, my name is Lisa Ross. You can find my patterns on Ravelry or paperdaisycreations.com. I hope that you will give them a try and I wish you all very happy knitting.